Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. This is the weekly news wrap-up for Friday, January 10th, 2014. Let me tell you what, not, what my number one story is not. It's the, uh, you know, Chris Christie, the New Jersey governor, and uh, lane closure gate on the GW, the George Washington Bridge. Uh, granted, it's uh, one of the busiest bridges in the world. I think 300,000 cars a day go over the GW Bridge. But really, this is a top story. Some, you know, a two, three rung down aide decides to have political payback. And this is what all the networks and all the news agencies are going to spend all their time and resources on. Let me tell you what my appraisal of this story is in a word, stupid. This is why the mainstream media is uh, losing viewers, losing credibility, and losing its relevance. You know, look over here, look over here, look over here. Hey, here's a story for you. You know, New York and New Jersey have, uh, you know, two of the highest deaths at the state level of any states in the union. Some of the highest. They're, they're drowning in billions and billions of dollars in red ink. And this is your, this is your big story. You're going to dig into this? Really? I mean, if, they, if the mainstream media could only dig and spend this kind, these kind of resources into, you know, the drone murder program or NSA spying on all Americans or, uh, you know, uh, how they're using the IRS as a political weapon or how about the bloody civil war in Syria or how uh, Saudi Arabia is, uh, you know, saying that the Obama administration stabbed him in the back or, you know, there's a possible war between uh, China and uh, Japan over the Senkaku Islands, uh, the list goes on. But the Chris Christie thing... That's a big deal. They're going to leave no stern and stone unturned and no email unread. They're really, really going to go after this. Yes. Look over here. Look over here. Look over here. Uh, speaking of which, uh, here's another, you know, I've said this from the time I've been on with USA Watchdog, that there is no real recovery. And I've had sources and interview subjects, uh, former Assistant Treasury Secretary Paul Craig Roberts, no recovery. John Williams, ShadowStats.com, uh, just this past week, no recovery. But yet, hey, here's the job situation. The, the job growth looking better and better. Look at that. It's, it's looking good, folks. It's looking better and better. Uh, who cares if the uh, labor participation rate is bouncing around 30-year lows? Uh, that's people who aren't looking or aren't counted uh, for jobs, underemployed, unemployed. Uh, the real unemployment rate wouldn't be around 7% if you did it the way it was in 1994 and earlier, according to John Williams at Shadow Stats. It'd be, you know, north of 22 23%, somewhere in that neighborhood. The real unemployment, underemployed, unemployed rate. That would be the, the real rate. And who cares if those, uh, those jobs are part-time and low-wage paying jobs? Jobs are getting better and better, just getting better and better. The recovery, it's the recovery. It's out there. Of course, here's another uh, story that probably should have been included in this story. I like this story. Uh, this is kind of sad, too, because uh, if you look right here, you know, Macy's, uh, right here, Macy's is uh, uh, laying off 2,500 people. Here we go. Let me get it in focus here for you. There you go. 2,500 jobs. You know, for profitability, that's the way they're spending it, for profitability. So let me get this straight. You're selling so many, the nation's, one of the nation's largest retailers is selling so many products, uh, uh, so many things that they have to lay off 2,500 people and close five stores. That's growth. That's a good economy. Uh, granted, I know some of it went to online sales, but still, that's being spun as profitable. They're selling so much stuff that, that they had to lay people off and close stores. <laughs> really? Janet Yellen is the uh, new Federal Reserve chief, and in her first uh, Time Magazine interview, Janet Yellen, I'm going to read you her quote, uh, she said, you know, a lot of people say this uh, asset buying, this is the $75 billion a month the Fed is buying starting this month, it was $85, $75 billion a month the, fund is bought, the uh, Fed is buying to prop up the banks and the economy, $35 billion a month just to the big banks, of course, nobody will ever ask which banks are getting this money. But anyway, uh, you know, a lot of people say this asset buying is just helping rich people, but uh, it's not true. Our policy is aimed at holding down long-term interest rates, I'm reading her quote, uh, which supports the recovery. It's back to that recovery. It supports the recovery by encouraging spending. Well, I guess Ms. Yellen didn't see that time, uh, Ms. Yellen and time, 
uh, didn't see that op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal back in November by former Fed official Andrew Hazar. He was in charge, at least in part, of the bond buying program, and uh, he made a public apology. He did an op-ed piece and then also went on CNBC and made a public apology by saying, and I quote, I'll read his quote, the central bank continues to spin QE as a, a tool for helping Main Street. But I've come to recognize the program for what it really is, the greatest backdoor Wall Street bailout of all time. Yeah, right, the Fed is helping the little guy. <laughs> That's rich. Time Magazine, you should be ashamed of yourself for not bringing this up in her story. That was a puffball piece. You're not a news organization. Wake up. You're a spin doctoring device, and the government wanted that. Another or one that works, you know, helps push the government, you know, recovery. Uh, QE is helping little people, you know, uh, idea here. Uh, it's another week uh, and uh, another you know, pretty big fine for J.P. Morgan. Uh, here it is. I mean, it's again, uh, J.P. Morgan's uh, Madoff penalty tops. $2.5 billion. Now, part of this is rested restitution, but part of it is to settle criminal charges. Criminal charges. This is a $65 billion fraud. You've heard about it by uh, Mer Bernie Madoff and, and, uh, and crew, his business, $65 billion. People took a pounding. They lost, uh, some of them lost everything. Uh, and uh, J.P. Morgan gets to get their checkbook out and write a check and settle criminal charges. Boy, I bet you Bernie Madoff would have liked to have gotten his checkbook out and written a check to settle criminal charges instead of spending the rest of his life in jail. Now, you know, let's add up a, a, some of these penalties and losses and restitution. $2.5 billion in restitution and losses. And remember that uh, London whale trade where they lost $6.2 billion and paid another all total of more than a billion dollars in about $7.2 billion? Oh, and then the mortgage uh, security, mortgage bond uh, deal, which they still face pending criminal charges. Uh, you know, the civil penalty was $13. Billion dollars, 2.5, 7.2, uh, 13 billion. Isn't that almost 23 billion? 22.7, 23 billion, almost 23 billion dollars in the last year alone in losses, restitution, uh, penalties, and there's still an ongoing criminal investigation. And that 13 billion that J.P. Morgan uh, paid it did not uh, release them from uh, possible criminal charges. Okay, two questions. Why don't any bankers get charged or uh, criminally or go to jail? That's number one. Number two, how does Jamie Dimon still have a job? How does he still have a job? Hey, well, uh, here, here's where the uh, USA Today put the story. Here's the, the money section, USA Today. And they made sure they put it on the back page, you know, above this uh, little advertising, on the back page. Of uh, you know, it's a 2.5 billion made off. It's like 2.6. They're saying nearly. Uh, they put it on the back page of USA Today. Of course, I'm sure that the ongoing business relationship that J.P. Morgan has with Gannett, who owns USA Today, uh, and also their shareholder in USA Today, I guess that wouldn't really affect anything. Here, here is this guy, Michael Wolf. Okay, he's a uh, Billy Badass. Hey, Michael. Here's a story idea. How can a CEO? Still facing, well, his company still facing possible criminal charges. And he sits atop of a company that lost nearly $23 billion in fines, restitution, and uh, trading losses. How does Jamie Dimon still have a job? That's a good one for you, isn't it? That's a good one. It's a good story. Think, Jay, you think uh, USA Today is going to cover that story? You think Michael Wolf's going to cover that story? I hope you do, Michael. I think you're a good guy, but I don't think your company will allow you to do that. And finally, just two more side notes. Uh, the UK Royal Mint ran out of its 2014 sovereign gold coins. They're called sovereigns, but they ran out of their 2014 sovereigns gold coins. Uh, what is this, a week into uh, 2014? They're out, done. Uh, the, the UK Mint uh, was quoted by saying, uh, well, the reason why we're out is because of exceptional demand. You think? 
You print tons of money and your economy's in the tank and you're looking at printing tons more money and people are rushing to go buy gold. Hmm. Here's another side note across the pond. Uh, this was a record year for gun buying in the United States of America. Uh, 21, more than 21 million background checks were performed. You could buy more than one gun with these uh, background checks. More than 21 million background checks were performed, and a record number of guns were sold in the United States of America in 2013. Hmm. Maybe people on both sides of the ocean aren't that stupid, and maybe they're starting to wake up. I certainly hope so. That's the way I see it. I'm Greg Hunter. Thank you so much for commenting on the site. Thank you for using the donations button. You all go out and have a nice weekend.